Hey everyone, this is Nitro. So, welcome to another video on Nitro setup. Now, before I begin anything about this week, let's talk about what happened last week with regards to dragon farming and the SSR that I got from that. So, let's start with the daily dragon farm results, okay? So, summed up, first of all, is in total, I've done 70 dragon runs last week. And from those 70 runs, I got 7 SSRs. So that's, what, 1 SSR per 10 runs on average? Um, in addition to that though, I got 3 additional SSRs from joint battles. Now, unfortunately last week though, I didn't get anything new, so they were all repeats of SSRs I previously had. So, it is what it is. Monday I got a Tierra, which is absolutely useless, so that was 100 ore. Also got a goddess's left hand from joint battle, which I also trashed because I already have a level 50 goddess's left hand and I don't need a second one. Tuesday, no, nothing from the dragon runs, but I did get a Vidar's Rose from the timeless trial. Also got a last knight from joint battle. Wednesday, six dragon runs and I got nothing. Six random accessory boxes and I also got nothing. But I did some armor and helm gambles because I had a ridiculous amount of uh, ore saved up. Assault suit, galaxy cloak, and a second tenuous robe. The second tenuous robe is nice because now I can start leveling them up and have some gear for my mages and whatnot. But fairly low priority, you know. I'll level it up eventually, but not a top priority at all. Moving on. From the helms, I got a Twilight Helmet, Loki's Mask, and Dark Crown. So all three helms were rather useless to me. I already have a level 50 Twilight's Helmet. Loki's Mask, I think I have a level 50. Or if I don't, I have enough uh, SSRs to level one up to level 50. Just don't haven't done it yet. And then Dark Crown, I already have a level 50 on Bozal. Thursday, six Dragon Runs, one Gargoyle Jacket. No complaints there, I mean, I'll keep it for now because Gargoyle Jackets are generally not considered as good as last rites, but uh, they're okay items. Friday, 6 dragon runs, nothing. Saturday, I only did a single run in the morning for the daily and I got a dark crown. The reason I didn't do any further runs on Saturday is because I'm now using uh, my 12 Sorry, my 120 or so uh, stamina to hit 300, I'm using it to do the event, Trails in Time. So by doing, you know, by running uh, Trails in Time multiple times on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm planning to finish the, off the event that way. And then from the joint battle on Saturday, I actually picked up a Death's Robe. So yeah, like I said. 3 SSRs from joint battles, which was kind of lucky last week. It's pretty rare for me to get that many SSRs just from doing your joint battles. And then last but not least, on Sunday, 49 dragon runs. I got 4 SSRs. Unfortunately, they were all useless, so I turned them all into ore. I will. Because first, I got a blue moon. I think that's like my 12th or 13th blue moon. So given I already have three level 50 blue moons, I just trashed this one. Got a bloody melody. I have a level 50 bloody melody. So trash that one as well. Picked up an Alver staff. I already have a level 50 Alver staff. Trashed it. And then finally I picked up a Nighthawk. And to me, Nighthawk is absolutely useless. So trash that. So let's get back into the game then. So what is my current status with regards to SSR equipment? It's still messy. Um, if I open it up, give me a moment. So I think it should be summon screen and the gallery screen and equipment. Weapon wise, still missing that Ragnarok. Still missing the Yggdrasil branch. Still missing the extreme magic bow. I think those are the three that really matter and I'm missing all three. The rest of them, like Seduct Bathory to Seductress, doesn't really matter. Queen Scepter, nice to have, doesn't really matter. 
Wandering Knight is the new exclusive weapon, right? Spirit Griever, doesn't really matter. Blue Star, I have a Steel Guardian, so it doesn't really matter. Red Moon, also nice to have because it's slightly better than the Blue Moon, but if you don't have one, it doesn't really matter. So you can see, a lot of... I'm really missing just three uh, of the major final weapons, the but the two that really matter to me is Ragnarok and Extreme Magic Bow. I could even give up the Ragnarok at this point, I just really want Extreme Magic Bow at this point. So farming Dark Dragon continues, because unless you get Extreme Magic Bows, using characters like Zerida is kind of dangerous in PvP. Alright, next. Armors. Still missing the last rates. Still missing Bloodline Magic Armor. Still missing Aeolus ba uh, Battle Armor. And those are the three that really matter, right? Uh, Demon Lizard Skin, nice to have, not required. Black Bride, exclu Lana Exclusive, not really required either. And Arcane Battle Garb, apparently it does the fixed damage to the enemy after the battle. They finally updated the description, which makes it basically garbage. So, there we go. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm missing all the very best armors, but it is what it is. Helmets. I am missing all the good helmets as well. No King's Crown, and King's Crown becomes more and more important for PvP. Tenyo's Headdress, nice to have, but not exactly required. Odin's Battle Helm, once again, nice to have, not exactly required. Charon, <laughs> nice to have, not required. Yadrasil Reef, nice to have, not required. So, but yeah, you can just see, it's just, I'm missing all the helmets that mages and holy units would use. And of course the King's Crown, which you want on a lot of characters too. So, I don't know. Farming continues, I suppose. At the end of the day though, the thing about the helmets is they're all nice to have items, but they're not 100% required. I mean, I do want a Charon because it can allow you, but uh, yeah. All of these items, just don't have them, so what can I do? My priority first, ultimately, is to get the Extreme Magic Bow. Once I have that Extreme Magic Bow, then I can look into farming for newer armors and helmets. And ultimately, these items are more PvP focused rather than PvE. So even if you don't have them, you can do fine. So let's move on. Accessories then. And accessories is totally utterly random. So. I'm missing a lot of them, but that's to be expected because you only get, you can't farm for accessories. The only way you get them is one every week, pretty much, from Timeless Trial. And then you might get some from Limited Time Events. For example, in this Trails in Time first chapter, there's a few, I think, random accessory equipment. Oh, no, this is a random equipment pack. This is the SSR accessory gift box. So at 5,500 points, you get a random accessory gift box. So occasionally, events will give you uh, random accessories. And then the final way you can get them is from the store via honor points. Sometimes this random accessory gift box gives you a SSR and then also the SSR accessory gift box once per month can give you SSRs, of course. So very limited ways to get SSR accessories. So it's all luck for that. Okay, so that is the current status of my SSR items. And you can see I'm still missing quite a few of them. But again, if I'm focused purely on PvE, it's not a big deal. It's been enough for me to clear all the PvE content except for Scylla level 65 and even in terms of PvP for World Arena my party is enough for me to actually be ranked occasionally in the top 10. So last week on my server Rocky Valley with it was 1642 points I was ranked 9th which meant in terms of rewards I was getting the max reward right? 220 crystals 150,000 gold and 500 honor points. So, there we go. 
All right, so at this point, let's talk about my gear. And in terms of gear, Leon's equipment set continues to not change. I don't think I'll go over it again. I most recently covered Leon's gear in yesterday's Phoenix level 65 video. Lana's gear, you can see, she still doesn't even have an SSR helmet. So, <laughs> I don't know what to say here, you know? It's just, I have not gotten any of the good SSR helmets. Maybe I might end up leveling up a level 50 Dark Crown for her at this point, just because I'm not picking up anything else. In the meantime though, she rotates between using a Warlock's Hood and between using the Sage's Hat, which is currently on Hein. So, yeah. in terms of PvP though, she does get one shot at it right, currently. Um, as a quick note, she did previously have the level 50 Death's Robe, right? I currently gave her a level 30 Tenyo's Robe because this gives at least plus 12% hit points, um, whereas the Death's Robe doesn't give any additional hit points. So it is what it is. I mean, since she gets one shotted anyways in uh, PvP, it doesn't really matter whether I give her a level 50 Death's Robe or a level 30 Tenu's Robe. So that's why I just changed it up for now. The other main reason is because I gave this Tenu's Robe a magic enchant, whereas this one has clocks. So it just fits better with her uh, enchants. So that's how Lena is currently built. Uh, Ledin, once again, I went over Ledin's equipment in yesterday's Phoenix 65 video, so I won't do that. Elwyn went over his equipment in the 65 video as well. But the most important thing is he has just hit the six star state. So let's do the upgrade and see how much his stats increase by going up to six stars. 36 more attack. That's nice. And the most important thing is 100% chance to heal. So, quite a bit of increase. It looks like Elwyn has just become my strongest character at 6173 power. Is that really the case? Let's take a quick look. Power, strongest hero? Yep. So there we go. Elwyn has now become my most powerful character. I don't know what that says about my party. <laughs> wow. All right, let's move on. Um, Bozel, five stars, not six, but he does enough for me to, in terms of damaging things, clearing the eternal temples, etc. So I'm not particularly interested in farming those last 140 shards. There's just too many other characters to level up right now. Uh, equipment, his equipment hasn't changed, you know. What I, for PvP, I do want to replace this Galaxy Cloak with the Baldur's White Robe, but I'm not in a rush to do that. Similarly, for Dark Crown, I do want to replace it eventually, but I don't have the replacement item. And I think the Dark Crown replacement, if I recall properly, let me just go back into here. It should be either of the following. Um, Soul Stealer Headdress. I've, yeah, Soul Stealer Headdress is the best one because right after taking action, you have a 25% chance to silence the active skills of one enemy within three blocks. So being able to stack you know, in case silence does not, sorry, in case seal does not silence the enemy, you get a second chance to silence your opponent with this soul stealer headdress. So that's a great item. You could also use Odin's battle helm, but Odin's battle helm is not that good for Bozel because you you don't expect Bozel to eliminate enemies, right? So that's not why it's not as good for him. So yeah. Soul Stealer Headdress would probably be the replacement to Dark Crown if you can get one. Alright, so, but despite not having PvP oriented gear, Bozel is fine. You know, this is Miracle Staff is pretty much his final weapon, Speed Boots is pretty much his final weapon. So, 
I'm quite happy with my proposal. Bernhard, he has, what can I say? He doesn't have a fully upgraded equipment set, but he doesn't need it either, right? When I use Bernhard in Angelica's training grounds or for, let's say, uh, Anarchy Adon, he does enough damage to one-shot the target he attacks. So it's fine. No need to upgrade him. Liana, I covered her gear yesterday, but you can see. Still a level 50 green leaf coat, level 50 sage's hat, level 50 crystal ball. Level 50 blue moon, because even with this, she heals enough to basically bring my characters to full hit points. So no complaints there. The only things I would do with changing her equipment is, well, first, give her a Tenyo's robe as well, right? Once this hits level 50, if it ever hits level 50, I'll replace this green leaf coat with the Tenyo's robe. The other change is replacing the crystal ball with a holy ring. So you'll lose some hit points, but you get additional intelligence and additional intelligence from both of these. And yeah, lose hit points, have magic defense value over here, and then you'll have more intelligence because it becomes plus 75 rather than plus 49. And then rather than plus 10% healing effect, you get plus 8% int. So between the blue moon and the holy ring, you become purely adding intelligence, which means occasionally you can do a magic attack and do good damage. So that would be my build for Liana. Kind of odd, because Liana usually spends more time using prayer, heal, and a gain. But just having at least one healer set that is focused on increasing int rather than increasing healing is always a good thing. At least that's my opinion of it. In fact, I probably will have to, once I do have that holy ring and so on, I'm probably going to re-roll their enchants. Change it from crystal to maybe full moon. And then that, set, that way, the enchant will also give plus 10% int, right? So, or sorry, plus 15% int, because what full moon does, if I bring it up quickly, is, oh, here we go, plus 5% int from the two-piece factor, and then all offensive and defensive stats increase by 10%. So that would be another 10% int from the four-piece effect, meaning a total of plus 15% intelligence. So you give up a bit of healing, what, 5% healing here, but you get more intelligence. So it's a great set to have for, I guess, a hybrid healer. A healer that will meet, will heal and also uh, attack occasionally. To be honest, that it such a set is probably better on a Tiaris than it is on a Liana, but we'll see. It may be that what ends up happening is I give Liana a different set of equipment once I have that final set done. So maybe I'll give her like the goddess's left hand or the... Uh, level 50 Ulver staff that I have, rather than the blue moon. So we'll probably see some swapping around of equipment eventually. Moving on, Hein now has my second mages set, and it's actually fairly well built. Blue moon, level 50, with a nice plus 14% intelligence. It's actually almost as good as Lana's, isn't it? There's plus 12% int and plus 10 int here. So pretty decent enchant. For pure int, anyways. Galaxy Cloak? Only because I keep getting them. It's not because, uh. You can see, I have a level 50 Galaxy Cloak on Bozel, level 40 Galaxy Cloak on Hein, and two more Galaxy Cloaks. So I just keep ping picking up more of them. The only reason I haven't finished these upgrades is because I'm lacking these materials. And I don't have any uh, guild medal points. Currently, my guild medal points, I'm very, very low on. Even though I get so many, right? I still have to buy my runestone. And I'm currently focusing more on getting the class masteries on characters than I am on upgrading equipment. So that's why not that much equipment upgrades this week. But it's interesting to note that Hein does have a level 40 Galaxy Cloak and a level 40 drop near. 
and all of the- I didn't put a single Epic Mark of Spirit into this. It's just from the random, uh, you know, random accessories I'm getting, I've been getting a good number of these drop nears. So as a result, I now have a nearly complete second mages set of equipment. And you know what? Having a level 40 drop near is okay to me because I only use Hind or this second equipment set for PvE content anyways. So while for PvP you might want the ideal item like Holy Ring for immunity to silence, for PvE it doesn't really matter which one you have. The enemies don't really silence you or anything like that, so you're more versatile in that sense. So let's go on, move on. So there's my second mages equipment set. And I guess I'll talk about my healer sets, right? Liana's healer set is the offensive healer set, right? Almeda has a gift of eternal life, level 50, with a true cross, level 50. Sage's hat, level 50, and then devout coat, level 30. Reason I don't care about upgrading these two items is because my healers are never expected to be attacked, especially with Leaden protecting them, right? So it lets me get away with using unupgraded uh, armors as a result. This set currently has Tree of Life and it's actually, it's going to be a temporary enchant, I feel. It's great for fights like Phoenix and so on, right? Because it gives that additional 5% defense and magic defense, which really helps Leaden. So there is Almeda's equipment set for now. Matthew is actually the character I'm currently leveling up, which is ironic. In fact, I actually decided to put two runestones into my Matthew. And I know people are going to wonder why. The reason is because I had to decide between leveling up Cherry or leveling up Matthew. One or the other, okay? And this was a decision I made to do Matthew instead of Cherry because of Eternal Temples. Um, to do Phoenix 65 very quickly in... I think, it was, I think it was like somewhere between four to six turns, you need a character with attack command because attack command stacks on top of the faction buff. So since Matthew would have use for both Scylla level 65 as a Legion of Glory character and Phoenix level 65 as a protagonist character, I decided to level up, do the double class mastery on Matthew just to make my clearing of the phoenix level 65 easier cherry on the other hand really only works for uh scylla level 65. He, she is uh of the princess alliance faction so she could be used for um leviar 65 but i already have a solid strat for leviar 65. So because of this PvE limitation where Cherry is only good for Scylla, that's why I did not double class mastery her. I'm going to struggle. There are some uh, problems with making this decision, of course. There's drawbacks. There's drawbacks to every decision you make. But in the case of not leveling up Cherry, well, it makes it harder and harder for me to use her in regular arena for auto battling, right? Because in order for Cherry to be used for regular arena auto battle, she has to one-shot the enemy so that Wild Princess activates and she can kill a second target. But in this case, because she doesn't have her second class mastery, she generally doesn't do enough damage against Ledin to one-shot him. So there's the disadvantage of me not doing double class mastery on Cherry, but I'm okay with that. There are other strategies which don't need Cherry. Alright, so that's the decision I made to level up Matthew with double class mastery instead of Cherry. We'll see how this works out for good or for ill. Luna has her own custom set of gear, uh, also lacking double class mastery, just the runestone limit is killing me I have to say. But despite that, she's currently in an okay state, not exactly top class yet right twilight armor still i still need one more twilight armor it seems before i can have this at level 50 and she's currently using a level 40 barrier lance for plus 12 percent magic defense when i already picked up a cursed lance right 
So there's still pieces of gear on Luna's equipment set that needs upgrading. But uh, despite that, you know, I'm quite happy with how she's turned out so far. I could. The main thing is I actually need to reroll these two to get them to plus 15% magic defense, ideally. But it's going to be hard to replace them. Yeah, I'm going to have to reroll a lot of enchants to get better ones. But in the meantime, you know, Cherry's not, or sorry, Luna is not my bread and butter unit at this time, anyways. So I'm quite happy with how she's turned out currently. All she needs now is the double class mastery, and then she'll have the extra magic defense from that, and she'll be basically in her final state. But one reason why I'm holding off on Luna though is because I don't have her Holy Pegasus leveled up. They're currently at level 7. So until they're at level 10, where there's a 100% chance to decrease damage taken by 50%, she's still a little bit iffy. So I'm slowly working on that one though. So that's the state of my Luna. And Zerida is the character I'm currently grinding up. So 32 out of 100 shards. What that means is I still need 68 shards. You can only get 3 shards per day with Zerida. So I still need another 23 days before Zerida hits uh, 5 stars. And after that you need another 30 days. So that's 53 days until she hits 6 stars. I was definitely late in grinding up my Zerida. But the, in my defense, the reason is because I'm PvE oriented. Right? My priority is to clear all PvE content, and only after that will I start looking at PvP content. So, But the drawback of that is, of course, I'm pretty far behind on my Zerida as a result. Lots of shards to farm on her. You can see, she still needs her Class Mastery here for Chaos Chosen, and then she also still needs her Double Class Mastery into Ninja and Shadow. Nonetheless, she has utility for Guild Wars, even in her current state, and her set of gear is currently level 50 Bloody Melody, level 40 Monkey King's Vest, level 30 uh, Loki's Mask, which I have two more of to bring to level 50, and then a level 50 Judge's Talisman. These two are the ones that really matter right now, and I occasionally give her a level 30 Alder's Bow. So once again, you can see lots of gear which still needs upgrading. And I think my la these are my last two equipment sets, isn't it? I already talked about Almeida's equipment set, which has the gift of eternal life, which is also useful for Chris, right? And also useful for Chloe, if I ever get Chloe leveled up. But in the meantime, the last two equipment sets are on Tiaris and Sophia, and they're both healing equipment sets. Tiaris, level 50 of her staff with a level 30 Angel's Fetter because I picked up two of these. <laughs> you can see, level 1 <laughs> Galaxy Cloak. I just threw it on her because she needed a third item with a Crystal Enchant and in a level 20 Sage's Hat. So this equipment set is more just purely about healing. Once again, no expectations you will ever be damaged. So that's why it's not upgraded. And even her class mastery is only at 3 out of 4. So slowly upgrading my Tiaris. I really do want to get her to at least 5 stars if possible so that there's an 80% chance of recovery as opposed to 60%. But give, you know, Everyone needs shards. There's so many characters that need shards. It's hard to level up all these characters, right? And last but not least, Sophia. And Sophia, you can see, also a level 20 Tenyo's robe, but level 50 Goddess's left hand, level 50 Crystal Ball, level 50 Sage's hat. So once again, no expectation of her being attacked and just increasing intelligence. So that's the current status of my equipment. You can see lots of things I still need to upgrade, which is why it's so hard to balance between uh, using your Aura Column Ore to purchase Epic Martial Spirits or do gambles. So, tough decision. 
Actually, let me do my three weapon gambles right now because I do have 900 Aura Column Aura, so let's get to it. First weapon gamble, another double Zax. Second weapon gamble, a second Dragon Slayer Gram. Third weapon gamble, and no, another Alver Staff. So once again, not the items I need. I'll keep the Dragon Slayer. Now I have two of them. But I am going to break down the Devil's Axe, and I am going to break down the uh, Alver's Staff. So, get some ore back this way. Number one, and number two. Actually, let's break down the Blue Moon as well. I truly do not plan to build another one. So there we go. I got 600 ore this way. And actually, since I have 600 ore, I can actually do a bit more gambling. What I really should be doing is Epic Martial Spirits. You know, at this point, I really should be getting the Epic Martial Spirits instead. But I will gamble because I'm just hoping to get a Charon. Carbon Fiber Helmet. Ooh, Soul Stealer Headdress. So there's a good one. And an Aeneas' Helmet. So... I think I already have two level 50 in AC's helmets, right? There's one on Elwyn, and there's... Nope, there should be one on... Leaden, yeah. So I'm not building up a third one. So that's another item to break down. But the Soul Stealer headdress is nice. It's my very first useful uh, SSR helm for mages. So nonetheless, Let's alchemy down the Anais' helmet. There we go. Alright, so that would be pretty much my weapon gambles for the week. And now I should really focus on getting Epic Martial Spirits again to level up the equipment. Yeah. Had some fun with gambling, but let's get back to seriously leveling up my gear. Alright, so that's all my gear at this point, you know, a lot of mage sets, a lot of healing sets, and just three, I guess, melee sets, sorry, four, or rather, okay, three melee sets, one tank set, three mage sets, right, uh, one is Bozo's custom set, two is general purpose, one general purpose flyer set on Cherry, right, and then Luna has her custom gear set which is not useful for anyone else right now. Oh, and I suppose one archer set. So my gear, my sets of gear are steadily growing. In fact, Angelina, I think, is starting to build up her own gear, set of gear, yeah. Level 50 last night, level 50 assault ring, and then a level 20 the George Feathered Crown and a level 10 survival vest. So she is slowly getting her own set of gear as well. I can actually replace this survival vest, in fact, with a gargoyle jacket. So there we go. Let's do that. So another set of gear is slowly starting to be built. Let's roll a rough sea enchant on it and upgrade it to level 20. Oops. So two of those and a few of these. And we're done. So there we go. Slowly but steadily, I'll have yet another flyer set of gear. This one will not be anywhere as good, but at least there'll be an extra set so I don't have to struggle as much with moving around equipment. All right, and so that's everything about all my gear in this video. Once again, I'm not going to go over my training ground because yesterday in the Phoenix level 65 video, I talked about my infantry training ground my holy training ground and my flyer training ground and those are the only three that i upgraded anyways lancer untouched calvary untouched archer and assassin untouched so nothing has really changed with all of these right i suppose you could say i got access to the shinobi but they're level two so they can't really be used nothing about the archer set is useful right now calvary is pretty much the same state level five heaven's guard level four for all calvary not really touched, right? 
And then same with Lancer. Lancer, I'm not farming Valen right now, so it hasn't been touched as a result. No. All that's to be said is level 9 Phallax units. So, that's everything about my training ground then. And in terms of bonds, I talked about the three characters that I've been focusing on upgrading bonds on. So it's these three. I've also been doing Hein for Scylla 65, right? slowly upgrading this attack bond and this one to increase the damage that Hein will do. And I've started doing Matthew as well because I got the double class mastery on Matthew. So I'm going to upgrade his bonds so that he does more damage. So Hein and Matthew are the focus, I think, for this week in terms of the regular bonds. And in terms of the heart bonds, it's still going to be finishing off uh, Elwyn and Leon's heart bonds so that they get that plus 5% additional stats or whatever. I probably will not touch the defense, the toughness bond though, because I don't have enough bursting heart keys, unfortunately. So given that I'm doing the upgrades on Hein and Matthew, they'll just get the heart bonds upgraded and then we'll go from there. Maybe Zerida, maybe Luna, or maybe Liana as well, because upgrading Liana's heart bond will make her more survivable for regular arena, which would theoretically let me have more defensive victories here. Definitely the reason I keep failing is because Liana dies in the defensive formation. So that's everything I want to say in this video. This is my current status. Uh, yeah, it's moving along fairly well. I think it's important to note that a lot of my characters, once again, the most important point I should say is they don't have their optimal gear at all for their armor or their helmets. Okay. It's, but despite that, they do perfectly fine for PVE content. You don't need the absolute best items to beat PVE content, you know? It's the best items are would be nice to haves, but they're not required, you know? You can have, for example, all your healers can have, uh, healers and mages can have very, very low level uh, armors and do fine. It's just a uh, helmet is kind of important because mages and healers aren't likely to take magic damage. So increasing the magic defense could help. But even for this, Using a level 50 SR helmet is more than enough for your healers to tank damage and whatnot. So just some food for thought. You know. Most important items for sure is the correct uh, weapon and the correct accessory. But helmets and armors, you can kind of neglect for healing and mage sets. All right, so that's the concluding point then. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video interesting. And on that note, Nitro out.